If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with another deck tech for you. Shoutouts to, uh, first of all, shoutouts to Proxies for making this deck tech possible. Shoutouts to TJ Pool for allowing me to use this playmat. And shoutouts to Noble Hierarch for being in the deck. So, I came across this wonderful card. Well, actually, this wonderful card. <laughs> Cephalid Constable. This is the inspiration for the deck, uh, because, first of all, I didn't realize at first that it was modern playable, hence why I showed you this. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, return up to that many target permanents that player controls to their owner's hands. Whew! Okay, so that's awesome. First of all, because permanents, not non-land permanents like we're used to on so many of these, just permanence. That means that if we can get this guy big enough and we can actually connect with him or her, I don't know, it's a cephalid, whatever, then lo and behold we can just bounce their entire deck back to hand and put them back to square one. Stone Rain can't do that at three mana. Molten Rain, Fulminator Mage, but this guy can bounce their whole field back. And that seems pretty awesome to me. Now it's a three mana 1-1. One, one. So we do have to work to make this work, obviously, but this is a 4 of, and I wanted to build a deck around you. So how would I go about doing that? Well, first I'm going to show you the other creatures, and then I'll show you the means to that end. Uh, next we have Cold-Eyed Selkie. So while Cephalid Constable keeps our opponents from winning, Cold Eyed Selkie lets us draw a bunch of cards. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you draw that many cards. So if it's a four power beater, then you draw four cards. Oh, and it has Island Walk, by the way. So in a lot of matches, this just will draw you an extra card every turn. And that's fine, that's not broken though. Again, three mana, one one. But what if it draws you four cards a turn? Four cards a hit? That, on the other hand, is something. Now, beyond that, though, I've been experimenting, and I'm not exactly sure what goes in. I do have uh, four Augury Adepts. I'm just experimenting. Maybe a Daxos of Melitus in here. Um, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, reveal the top card of your library and put that into your hand. You gain life equal to its converted mana cost. So it draws you one card a turn, Again, three mana, but this one's a two-two, so maybe it's slightly more resilient or hits for more, and it gives you some life gain in the main board, which is helpful because because burn is a strong match and a ubiquitous match. Geist of Saint Traft probably needs to be more than one. I'm experimenting with it at one though, just to see how strong Augury Adept is, uh, and it's legendary, so any more than one and we have a bit more of an opportunity cost, but yes, probably needs to be more than one and I realize that, but I want to experiment before I add more. I also want to make our creatures bigger and have some main board hate. If it were just a 2-2 two, two for 2, okay, that's on curve, but it has exalted so it's a 3-3 three, three for 2 sometimes when it's attacking, and it's main board artifact and enchantment hate. Yes, please. Want to make my Cephalid Constable and Cold-Eyed Selkies all that much bigger? Now, in order to get these out, we need to play some ramp. I want to cast all of these on turn two. So we have four Birds of Paradise, of course, and the aforementioned, the one, the only, four of, actually, a uh, Noble Hierarch. Shoutouts to you for being awesome like that. Now, those are our ramp spells. <laughs> so ideally, the play is turn one, Birds of Paradise or Noble Hierarch. Turn two, one of our bigger dudes. <laughs> and then we go to town. Turn three, hopefully we can take them out. Now, there's a lot of disruption in this format, so while that's the ideal game plan, 
that isn't always going to get the job done, admittedly. But, against a lot of combo decks in the format that aren't putting out creatures to stop us, remember, Modern has a turn 4 rule. That means that decks can't win before turn 4 consistently and without interaction. That means, I mean, there aren't a lot of great combo decks in the format, but those that try, like Ad Nauseam or Pyromancer Storm, this can get out ahead of them. This gets out on turn 3 and then keeps them from winning. That's the plan, anyway. Uh, now, in order to make them unblockable, we run four Distortion Strike, which has the bonus of giving us uh, an additional point of power, which matters for Sephlid, Constable, and, no and Cold-Eyed Selkie, and makes them unblockable for two turns. So this is an all-star in the deck. I am absolutely 100% sure. And next we have three Slip Through Space. Only makes them unblockable for a turn, but cycles itself, too. Just more unblockable seems good in the deck. Next, we have four mana leaks. So that once we actually get one of these established, say, for example, we start swinging with Cold-Eyed Selkie. At that point, we don't need to cast that many more spells. We need to keep our opponent from casting spells. We need to keep them from winning the game. And so a card like Mana Leak gets you out of that. Consider Remand as well. I considered it for the deck. Maybe it needs to go in. I'm not entirely sure. Instead of Remand, though, I put in four Vapor Snag. It's a tempo card. Makes them lose a life and, of course, unsummons. So, if you need to balance your creature, you absolutely can at the cost of one life and a card in one mana. But it just gives you a way to also, you know, remove their creatures, get your creatures to swing through. You get the idea. Now, for the land base, oh joy. So, we have one Flooded Strand. We have four Misty Rainforest. And four Windswept Heath. It's more important that you have green fetches than blue or white fetches, even though this is a Bant deck. And the reason for that, of course, is you want to be able to cast your turn one Bird of Paradise or Noble Hierarch. You don't need to cast anything else. I mean, I guess maybe... No, not really. I was about to say maybe a turn one Vapor Snag. No, not really. Uh, next we have four Breeding Pool. One Hallowed Fountain, as you can tell I'm going alphabetically for fetches, for shocks. And two Temple Garden. Like the Flooded Strand, the Hallowed Fountain isn't as important, although even less so for it, because it can't get you a turn one green mana. We have our wonderful little basics. We are rocking a forest, an island, and a plains. Forest because this is the first foil forest I ever opened. Even though this isn't the first foil island I ever got, look at that art. I'm 13 years old. And then, shoutouts to Dragon Ray, Dragon's Maze pre-release promos. I think this was pre-release. And then I'm also experimenting with two Horizon canopies. Again, shout out to proxies. If you 1080p it, you'll see that they're proxies. But yeah, they, uh, they're they in for more Temple Gardens. I actually don't have two more Temple Gardens. Uh, so maybe these look good? Maybe? They don't make blue mana, though. <laughs> um, but it would be nice in the late game to be able to draw myself out of a tough spot. Didn't leave myself a lot of room, did I? Alright, and then the sideboard. Then the sideboard. And I'm not exactly sure where to go with this. It's very experimental. So we're going to start out with a Fracturing Gust. We are a Bant ramp deck. So 20 lands, 4 birds, 4 noble. I think we can get to 5 mana reasonably consistently. Now, you can make the case we want uh, Creeping Corrosion instead. And that's fine. You can make the case that Austere Command, being a little bit more expensive but more versatile, is where I want to be. There are some prison decks in the format, I want to have an answer to them, and if that means one more mana, maybe that's worth it? I'm not sure. 
I'm assuming that I can cast this on turn 4 against Affinity. Maybe that's too slow. Maybe the turn 3 Creeping Corrosion is where I need to be. But there's that. For Meddling Mage, I'm playing blue-white in modern. I want to stop combo decks. This is my Nevermore. <laughs> and it's a 2-2, so it's a hate bear. Shoutouts to uh, Halle Berry, winning her Invitational in order to get this card. Uh, it's Chris Bacula, but that one looks like Halle Berry to me. I don't, I don't know what I think about all of the invitation, not all, but a lot of the Invitational cards having alternate arts that aren't the one who won the Invitational. That one at least looks nice. Uh, I'm running three natural states. The story target artifact or enchantment with CMC three or less. That seems fine to me. It gives me more cheap removal to supplement the Kasali Pride Mages. Can't really, I mean I guess I could run Nature's Claim, but I'm trading a tiny bit of versatility for not letting them gain life. One rip. One rest in peace. This gives me the ability to fight graveyard decks, obviously. No more Tarmogoyf, no more Delving, no more Grizzle Sh Grish Shoalbrand combo, etc. I run two Rocks War Monks, which I bring in against Burn. Lifelink on a 3 4 body for 3 mana. Now, granted, it's a Burn deck, so Bolt the Bird, so this is often a turn 3 play. But this is fine. This is usually very good. Uh, even when you get in a situation where, like, say they swing with Goblin Guide, you block, they bolt it, you still gain three life because they couldn't kill it before combat damage. And, of course, they lose their Goblin Guide. In other words, by virtue of having four toughness and being able to deal damage and having lifelink, it gives you the ability to still gain some life even if the opponent has to two for one themselves. Spell Sky, because Infect and Bogles are real decks. Enough said. And here's Worship. I don't know. Guess which one is a proxy? I'll even cycle through them. Uh, I don't know what I'm bringing this in, but it seems like it has a lot of applicability. Oh, it, it seems to me like this is the kind of card that... There are so many mid-range decks and decks that rely on combat damage to kill you in this format that if you can stick a creature and they don't have enough removal, they can't twin combo kill you, the uh, Junk and Jund decks... Jund may be able to kill all of your creatures with its gratuitous amounts of removal, that's true, certainly. Um, but otherwise, this just keeps you from losing the game. And if you can't lose, you will win because your creatures can be given unblockability to keep swinging through, or just can be unblockable anyway, or named Geist of Saint... No, you get the idea. Or can just return all of their permanents, including problem permanents that are keeping you from winning. So, Worship seems good in general, and that's the deck so far. Uh, other cards that I'm considering putting in... Well, Dryad Militant actually might go in... Not Dryad Militant, I'm sorry. Dryad Arbor, the Forest Arbor, the Forest Dryad, there we go, might actually go in in place of one of the Horizon Canopies so that I can go and fetch it for a Liliana Edict. I didn't do that here for two reasons. Unfortunately, Dryad Arbor does not have uh, haste and thus has Summoning Sickness. It is a creature still and can't tap for green on turn one. So that's somewhat of a concern, but more importantly, usually I do have a one drop out on in order to sack for Liliana instead. Usually I have a bird or a noble, so it isn't that big of a deal usually. That being the case, maybe I do need it just in case it may come up, uh, or I can put it in the sideboard. Uh, if you have any thoughts on that, then please let me know. It would also give me another creature to bring out if I don't have one of these guys, but I do have a fetch land. Having played Bogles before, I have actually kept a hand. Now, obviously you wouldn't do this against every deck, but in game two I kept a hand with no creature, but I did have fetch lands, and so I fetched out a Dryad Arbor and put a bunch of ethereal armors and whatnot on it, and lo and behold, that was the game. Obviously this isn't Bogles, 
but maybe the same logic can apply against very removal light decks it gives you a little bit just a tiny tiny bit more resiliency and it gives you something to do against Liliana of the Veil and of course surprise blocker that's true um, so that's the deck that's what I have here I don't actually even know what to call it I hope I came up with a title before I <laughs> so that the uh, video isn't just Bant Tim Poe? I don't know. Bant Constable? It's it's the best card in the deck, Cephalid Constable, but it's not the only awesome card in the deck, really, in my estimation. But yeah, I think I'm going to call it Bant Constable. That is what the deck centers around. That's why we're not just running more counter spells here. We're running uh, Distortion Strike as a 4 of, Slip Through Space as a 3 of. Alright. Well, that's it. Um... Also, other considerations, I have Sword of Fire and Ice and Sword of Feast and Famine that might go in at some point. Just throwing that out there. Fire and Ice means that I can't put these on it. Feast and Famine doesn't have that problem. It even lets me keep uh, mana open for Mana Leak. That's it then. I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.